we have Ireland men versus Australia men. Both teams are gunning for a win. Top two in this pool go straight to quarters, bottom two go to pre-quarters. We've got Ireland coming out on defence. The left of the screen pulling to Australia on offence on the right of the screen. Thanks, Hussey. I'm Max Stenstrom. We'll be keeping you company for this game as these two teams match up, trying to secure themselves a ticket to the quarterfinals. And Andrews is not going to waste any time. He's booked his ticket. Braden Chang's all aboard as Australia open their account in emphatic play there. 17 seconds in and we have a goal on the board. That was Robert Andrews with the huck, the lovely backhand down the line. Expect to see him lead this team in this game today. He recently played on the World Games Crocs squad in Wroclaw in Poland in the middle of last year. An extremely elite team that only gets formed once every four years. Just a handful of the best players from the top six ultimate nations in the world. He was there and he'll bring that experience, composure and skill to this game. Ireland have just come out of what they call mass and I think they may have been still with their minds on other higher matters because they let one in very quickly. They'll want to get their heads onto the field and around the disc now. Elliot Cook with the pull. Ireland have the disc in the middle. Curtis pops one. And Trent Thompson, among others, goes up, but he's the one that pulls it down. And now the disc is moved to Mueller. As the Goannas, as they're affectionately known, look to the end zone. Thompson's underneath again, and that's bookends for the young man from Queensland. He's a product of the Mammoth Club system. And you can see why he's known as one of the most dangerous players, both defensively and offensively on this Australian team. Ty Devey there, not really reading the disc as well. This is Australian opponent. Making the long walk back to the line to listen to Cron. Kieran Hudson to find out the plan for the next point. Cron Hudson, of course, a Melbourne local based here in Australia, has spent some time over in Ireland playing with the team out of Limerick known as Pelt. Many of these players also applying their trade for that Pelt team and a good portion also playing for the Dublin-based team, Ranelagh. Cornelius Shaden Shayan coming off there, giving his team a scream, pump him up. They're, they'll be keen to get a point on the board as soon as they can. Don't want to let those guanas speed away with the game before it's even got underway. Foreman rips a backhand. And what could have been an amazing day, it looks like it'll come back very quickly as an uncontested foul. Adrian Lim hustling hard to get involved there. Jack Lynch getting stripped on the mark there. He's the only player on the team from the Northern Ireland region of the island of Ireland. The Australians playing a zony defense at this point, though it appears there'll be a little bit more discussion. like they're playing a 2-3-2. Two, two. They've got the tall timber of Bill Foreman and Lachlan Murphy in the backfield patrolling the skies. And they've got Adrian Lim and Dan Petrov up front. Rogers with the disc. Scoping out his teammates. Find who's open. Connolly. Lynch. Not completed. Australia have an opportunity from about 15 metres out. It'll be picked up by Ash Evans, not traditionally known for his handling. 
Jones with a slightly around mark, lunging for the inside. And Lachlan Murphy goes sideways, but not quite far enough to reel that one in, despite his great length. Roger sticks one. Evans underneath it. Bit of a drop from Stephen Jones. He'll be a bit peeved about that one. Yeah, in the end, Ash Evans not reading it quite as well as his Irish uh, opposite number, but wasn't necessary in the end, and Australia will have another opportunity. This time the disc will be picked up by the captain of this Goanna's outfit, Liam Grimmond. Moves it to Evans. Moves it back to Grimmond. Australians struggling to generate options downfield that they like the look of and are willing to throw to. In the end, the disc bobbling out of the hands of Adrian Lim. Rogers has picked up quickly, but taking a little time to find someone open. Found Lynch. And there's an open man in the end zone. Oh, is that up? Looks like we'll have a bit of discussion. Looks like there may have been a foul call on the throw as well as a discussion as to up or down. The first thing to decide is whether the disc was caught. We've got game advisors there to help out. We've got Ollie and and they'll bring it back in. The Aussies will have to hustle hard. There's an open man just a few meters from the cone. Adrian Lim on the mark. Evans hustling hard to contain. Jones with the disc. Nice swing. Keeping it cool. Cutting hard upfield. Lynch with a poke over the top and pull down. Very happy receiver. Stephen Jones celebrating Ireland on the board. Camera something. He's got tattooed maybe temporarily on his forearm. The Australians will most likely be disappointed with that effort. They had a number of chances with the disc in their hands, but weren't able to put that disc in the end zone. This Irish team have perhaps surprised a few people in this tournament. They beat Great Britain, the long time rival, the classic derby a universe point match. They took Japan to universe point earlier today, but unfortunately went down in that one. And they also lost to Singapore in a tightly and hotly contested match on universe point yesterday evening. So they've been pushing teams to the very limit across the board, showing that they can mix it with the perhaps more experienced and more developed ultimate nations of the real world. Jeremy Ha feels it, passes it to his West Australian compatriot, Jackson Boche. Back to Ha. Has Gann on the near side, finds him. The Irish also playing a zone defense as Gann goes over the top to Boche. Expect to see Boche and Ha really quarterback this offense. And Ha launches one downfield. He has Cheng underneath for two oh, defenders. What a pluck down by Cronin. Find Shane. Bit of an overthrow by Shane. Just misses Gil Martin, who. If he'd have probably stuck with it initially, he might have made that, but hesitated, thinking it was overthrown more than it actually was. The Irish choosing to stay with their zone defense, and it's effective. Oh, 
Colin White here. And a footlock by Brendan Kanziri! Out of nothing, the Australians have produced a turnover. Sticks out the huge left foot. Blocking the forehand option from the Irish. And now Australia get another chance from directly in front in the centre of the field. Ten metres out. Boche to Chang. Chang looking for his dump. Goes inside to Ha. That's a tricky shot, but he makes it look easy. Ha faking, working hard to move his larger mark around Kanziri. Not a lot happening upfield. And the point block is returned in kind. Cronin smashing that one down and we're up. The big quick stick. And that is plucked out of the air by Ian McAuliffe, who lays one forward. Little too much on it. This game's only been going for three points. We've got layouts all over the place. It's incredible. That was Cronin that just couldn't reach that one. And Boche will restart play. He has Kanziri underneath. Finds Gan on the sideline. Island back in their zone. Gan again with the arcing backhand to open up the field. To Ha. Ha goes over the top as well to Gan. Gan has Kanziri. They'll play catch. They'll play give and go. They'll move it up the field. Finds McGuckin in the middle. Cheng on the doorstep. Tagan slicing through that zone like a hot knife through butter. <laughs> yeah, the Irish defenders were caught off guard there several times, hesitating as to whether make, to dive in and make the bids on those longer options. Getting pulled apart. We'll head down to Katie on the sideline. Have a listen. Hello, guys. Now we're. we're we have the pleasure of watching three different divisions at these World Under 24s. We've got the men's, the women's, and the mixed divisions, and all three divisions definitely have a different style of play. I think what this game so far has demonstrated to us, even only four points in, is that these men are not afraid to put their bodies on the line, laying out all over the place, getting up into the contests. And I wouldn't be surprised if that links back to some of their previous history in other sports. Some of the, some of the blokes on the Aussie team probably have played AFL in their time, wouldn't be surprised if the Irish blokes have played some Gaelic as well. Back to you. Yeah, that physicality, very obvious. Uh, even just in these first couple of points, both teams willing to put their bodies on the line. Both teams very happy to receive and give a little bit of contact. One of the great things about this sport and its self-officiation means that there's scope for the both teams to determine what kind of play is going to be acceptable for both teams. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of muscles out there. Trent Thompson from the Australian team, number nine, is known for his muscles, as well as being an incredibly nice guy, well-spirited and top-level player. Oh, a drop there from Jack McNamara. Might be tired from his 12 points in a row against Singapore. And now Mueller with the disc. Going around the mark, using his length to his advantage. And Harrison Ravai, completely unforced error. Drops that one cold. Drops him at Popsies out here right now. There is a bit of a wind. Not sure if it can be used for an excuse on those two, however. Up the line. Finds Connolly. Jones. Dawkins. Nice break there. I'll have a quick discussion. It looks like an uncontested foul by Mueller. He'll have no problem agreeing with that and he'll come back in on zero. McNamara on the disc. Calm dump. It's a lovely <laughs> backhand around the mark for the goal. In that tight front corner of the end zone. Happy to tow that one in. Three to Australia now. It's quite a lot of noise from both of these teams. 
chatting to the Aussie coaches before this match about how they were treating it, whether they were considering it a do or die must win match in order to secure themselves a ticket directly to the quarterfinals without having to play the pre-quarter. And they said, no, this is a standard day in the office for them. They're going to treat it like every other one, put in everything they have, but this isn't anything out of the ordinary. What a lovely office. There's a beautiful office down here in beautiful Perth, WA. I have to say, we've been very lucky with the facilities and the weather. Obviously, it is a bit windy. The wind going left to right on your screens, as it has been all day. And expect to see that impact the play. Not disastrously so, but the throwers will need to be aware. The receivers need to be on their toes and extra sharp. Testing the players. Separating the cream from the chaff. That's right, the curds from the way. Watch Ayn Hart. This offensive handling duo back to work. And they find Gan. Ha going cross field. And that one comes out a little too low as he turfs it. Rogers picks up quickly, moves it to the sideline. Gets it back again. Stack is starting to build. A few cuts at once, giving options. Dylan Ryan on the disc. Cheeky one up the line. And calmly placed in. It's worth noting that Dylan Ryan has played every single game this tournament in those sunglasses. It's a bold choice. It is. It's a very bold fashion choice. I'm not sure if I'd be seen doing that, but he's sticking to his guns and I admire the bravery. Yeah, I wonder how his teammates feel about that, uh, not being able to make long eye contact with him when they wish. Bogan scored that goal. Bogan's a, a word used in Australia for certain types of people. We'll go into that a little bit more later, but Bogan getting the goal on that point. Speaking of the sunglasses though, I was chatting to some of the Aussies about sunglasses after their match against the Japanese. And if you have managed to catch any of our streams with the Japanese, you'll see that almost all of them prefer to play with the sunnies on. And they were saying it makes a noticeable, noticeable difference as a defender not being able to see where the player you're marking is looking. Often as a mark, uh, when the player has the disc, you'll notice the direction they're looking and use that to preempt where they're looking to throw. And ha not having that option as a defender apparently was a noticeable difference for some of the Aussies following their Japanese game. Very interesting. I can feel Ruben Berg's ears pricking up at this and perhaps the Wooftoff Rules Committee will be considering whether that sort of equipment may give an advantage to the team that chooses to wear them. Australia back on offence. Grimmond moving it across the field to Petrov. The Irish playing a match defence while the Aussies are heading upwind. Australia find the release valve of Murphy as Grimmond the intended dump lost his footing. And that disc bubbling, bubbling through two pairs of hands on the Aussie team, neither able to haul it in. Jack McNamara finally slamming that one down. Jones. Rogers. What? Another unforced drop. Dylan Ryan there. He's the captain of the Ireland team. Again to Grimmond. Grimmond around the mark. He fakes and then throws, but it's cleaned up by Bill Foreman, who fakes the big. Instead, throws the inside forehand to Petrov. Speaking to the coaches earlier, I asked if there's any player on this team that's shown another level this tournament that they hadn't seen before, and they said immediately, without any hesitation, it was Bill Foreman. He's impressed them both offensively and defensively, so I expect to see big things from him this game. Ryan making up for his turn over there, getting that D. Straight back to the Australians. Ash Evans with the hammer over the top. He's got Murphy underneath it, and he hits him on the chest. That was a lovely pass. Couldn't have been more accurate if he'd had it on a fishing wire. 
the Australians go upwind. Obviously in upwind downwind games, upwind points extra valuable as they put you in a great position to play downwind defence thereafter. Somewhat ironic um, allowing such a delicious Irish drink as Murphy to get a goal there. Shout out to Keeks, the other game advisor on the field at the moment. Ollie and Keeks, keeping everyone together. Keeping an eye on proceedings, timings, and there to provide a perspective if required, and to advise on the rules when the players are unsure. A big shout out to our whole crew of game advisors at this tournament. They've been doing an excellent job providing their services, not just on this showcase field, but across the tournament. Helping manage the difficult situations that sometimes arise in high octane, high stakes ultimate. Really big pull for the Aussies. Ireland have worked it out of their end zone pretty quickly though. Travel call. And I believe in the rules under Woofdorf, a travel call is not a stoppage, but uh, maybe it's a contested travel, or they're going to have a chat about it anyway. Yeah, although it's not a compulsory stoppage, if stoppage occurs, it becomes a violation. Yeah, that's right. A game advisor will come over perhaps to provide some of that clarification we were talking about. They can also, of course, provide the perspective. It's not binding, and any decisions made are made by those players on the field. A very gentlemanly Linus Mueller discussing that call. He's got some German heritage. Oh, really great effort on that layout catch but couldn't close his hand on the disc and now it looks like there's another stoppage as the disc enters the hands of Elliot Cook another Queensland product of the mammoth system a number of these boys from that club but it is a true national team with representation from across the country members from all important states in the country on this team as Mueller gets it underneath. Fellow Queensland player connecting well. As he finds Sean Davis. And Jacobs, who will launch. That's a difficult throw straight down the sideline and it will end up sailing out the back. Conventional ultimate wisdom says we don't want to huck in the same third as the receiver. Yep. And that was a prime example of the same third huck, as you saw the receiver stream straight down that sideline. Just makes that throw extra difficult. It really does. It's a good tactic to move the frisbee across the field, widthways, and strike from a different third. Gives the receiver more angle on the view to run that puck down and more space to throw into. Connolly Dix flick out. Another loud clapping drop. Ireland need to cut those out. Cook with the disc. Motioning with his hands, not happy with what he's seeing downfield, eventually breaks the mark. Finds his man, Alex Leask. Another Queensland connection there, paying off. And Australia get their downwind break. Yeah, and although I don't think that it would be a sensible thing to dwell on those drops that have been happening on both teams, it's part of the game that can really drill into your team three share practice I was watching the um, women's game 
earlier on today between That's Japan Time Out Ireland and USA. And I I can't remember an unforced drop at all. They've they've really got their stuff together. Catches are compulsory. Got a timeout now called by Ireland. So it's a good chance to have a shout out to Emma and Toms who I believe may be visiting us in the VIP tent this evening. Hi to Emma and Toms, we've been really enjoying all of your wonderful sugar free snacks, drinks, milkshakes, very tasty, recommend them a lot. Absolutely agree, Huss. we've got the veggie nuts beetroot coated sitting with us uh, on the table. Each packet contains an equivalent of 13 grams of fresh beetroot. So you're well on your way to getting your daily dose of vegetables with a pack of those in Yeah, here. fresh nuts. Don't get much better than these. They're minimally processed because that's how we like them and they're better for you. So if you do want to support them, we recommend it. And get around the hashtag, look after yourself. It's probably also a great time to mention our other uh, travel sponsor, STA Travel. They are our preferred travel partner. So if you're looking to book travel in the near future, do head on down to them. They can help you with your road, rail, air, travel needs. They can also book hotels and that kind of thing as well. They'll hook you up. And it looks now both teams will be heading to their lines. The Irish heading downwind, the Aussies pulling upwind, and it'll be Bill Foreman with the pulling duties. He has flourished as a young player last year, oh, 2016, sorry, he played with the Australian Juniors under 20s team in Poland. And now he's here stepping up admirably into the big boys division. He's a product of the Canberra system, playing with Fishwick United. I know I'll be proud to see one of their uh, representatives in the green and gold. And that pull sails down, caught right on the end zone corner. Jack Lynch lays it off to Rogers. Give and go. Rogers and Lynch finding Devi. Starting to penetrate forward. Lynch finds one through DV. This is the first time Australia's played match defense when the Irish were heading downwind and it appears that the Irish have the answers for it as they move quickly downfield. They certainly do. Stephen Jones just being advised that he wasn't quite in when he caught that. Wasn't quite in the end zone. Goes for the cheeky inside and is pulled down by an unintended receiver, Dylan Ryan. Oh, and it looks like there'll be a pick call and it'll come back. It was a great effort by the Irish, sneaking an inside forehand under the long limbs of Lachlan Murphy. He's a formidable mark. Standing at well over six foot tall, he's listed as 212 pounds, six foot, five and a half inches. That's a scary figure. <laughs> Good stats. Showing the high release flick he was thinking about and then goes for the <laughs> high store count toss. And it now looks like we've got a stall call, as the players indicate with their arm signals. Did Stephen Jones unwrap his bones from the disc before the tee of 10? Seems like he didn't. And the Aussies moving quickly to pick it up. Grimmond wanting the immediate huck for Murphy, but it, he isn't able to squeeze it out. But he will find Murphy as he, like a salmon swimming upstream, explodes. And Adrian Lim reaching again for McGuckin. Oh! And 
can't hold on. Ty Devi gets in there and messes up that planned catch. Didn't get to it at its peak, but finished it off on the way down. The Aussie defence doing a great job of limiting the Irish options right now. Lynch and Rogers trying to keep the disc alive while they wait for a good downfield spot. Doing a good job of it. Using the lefty backhand for ease in this wind. Actually, it looks like he might be left-handed. Swatted out of the air by Dan Petrov. That half intended to go well past him, but you can't underestimate his vertical. He's a very explosive, dynamic player. Is young Dan Petrov playing his university ultimate with the UNSW, but unable to reel that catch in as it bounced out of his breadbasket. Highland making their way up the green. Gained a decent number of yards there. DV. Assessing the field. Picks out Dylan Ryan. Ryan, maybe his sunglasses aren't working in this low and sun. Reaching for Ash Evans, who lays out but unable to reach it. This point is stretching out into a long run with plenty of athletic bids by both teams. Jones. Another drop seam of drops. The call coming from the sideline. Be sensible, Goannas. The Aussies recognizing I have an opportunity here at about 15 meters out to secure another upwinder. And as we said earlier, upwinders always extra valuable as Grimmin breaks the mark to McGuckin. Goes inside with the forehand. Hits blinky Bill Foreman. And that's a goal as Australia go three in a row. And we'll have another look at this shot. It was a lovely inside forehand from McGuckin. Breaking the mark, getting the disc onto the break side of the field. Don't forget that you can donate your goods, your frisbee gear, your discs, your cleats, old shirts to less fortunate communities. You can donate them at the information tent here at the McGillray Fields. So if you're feeling generous, don't forget to bring them down tomorrow and pass them over. It's a great cause. We do recommend you support it if you can. Everyone's just going nuts to celebrate the uh, volunteer of the day, which has just been announced. Didn't catch the name, but it must be someone very familiar to the Goannas Australia team because they just did a little cheer for them as well. Volunteers working really hard here, supporting Anna Haynes, the tournament director, on this week-long tournament that's been in preparation for two years, nine months. The volunteers are getting up early, going to bed late and staying out in the sun, keeping everything on track so that the under 24 competitors can enjoy their week of Frisbee hassle free. Yeah, huge thanks to the, all of them. This whole event couldn't happen without them and they do deserve your appreciation. So if you do see them this weekend, they're walking around in blue shirts. Say thank you, give them a high five, I know they'll appreciate it. What a sweet pull. That was almost like a high release. It sat so high and dropped suddenly deep in the end zone. Ireland working it through. 
What? Connolly. He's missing his receiver there. Plucked out of the air by Alex Leesk, who immediately goes to Trent Thompson, who pulls that one down. He dumps it back, and they punch it in. Lovely passage of play from the Australian Goannas, showing their class, plucking the D and then moving it quickly. Ruthless. We'll head down to Katie Lock on the sidelines for another perspective. Hello, everybody. At this point in the game, when your opponent has just gone on a big D run, it can be easy to get in your head, but the Irish lads just chapped up with a big charge. So I'm sure, and they're just getting a circle, circling up around Cron. Here Rudy getting ready to hear what they're going to do for the next point to make sure they put that next one in the bank. And that's what they need to do to stay in this game. It's too easy to roll over otherwise. That's you. Yeah. Thanks, Katie. You're absolutely right. They've called a timeout because they want to stem this bleeding. Any thoughts, Hussey, on how they can do that? What would you be advising a team in this situation? As always, stick to the game plan. Looks like they're just not executing quite as clinically as they might like to. They're not doing anything structurally wrong necessarily, but having a few too many drops, few too many decision-making errors. So get back to the plan. They haven't been training for nothing. They just need to believe in themselves and trust in each other. You're absolutely right. Australia now on a four-point run. On the brink of taking half, the Irish seeing this is the time that they need to make their stand before the Australians run away with this. I do want to send out a big hello to all our international viewers. I know there's plenty of Irish uh, lads and lasses on the stream watching us, so thank you for joining us. We're very happy to be able to be broadcasting around the world from Perth in WA for all of this week, bringing Ultimate to as many people as possible is always a good thing in my opinion. I think a particular hello to the Spisons was required, so hello Spisons. Ireland ready for the disc. As Rob Andrews will be the one to send the backhand down the field. Duty picking up. Bit of a miscue leads to Petrov receiving that disc. And the Aussies a little bit chaotic at the moment as everyone's looking to get the disc moving. And in the end, the throw to Boche a little too high. The wind is picking up now as it flies left to right on your screens. That may be playing a part. Dirty with the fake. Looks to his dump, finds Jack Lynch. Colin White. We've also had another special request for a shout out to Lork and Murray. Another viewer on our stream, so thank you for joining us. He's a fellow commentator from the Green Isle, the Emerald Isle of Ireland, so thank you. Top of the morning to you. Top of the morning. Sorry about that. It's Brendan Kanziri, gets set to tap it back in. Oh, we've got a big pump and hark, but almost as big as the state of Western Australia, which is too big for intended receiver. The Aussies will have another opportunity, but they will have to work at the full length of the field. We've seen earlier today in some other matches, teams adopt a strategy in these tricky conditions of playing a more territory-based rather than a possession-based game relying on the wind to get them the disc back and instead choosing to play the, as much of the game as possible in the offensive half of the field. 
Boche walking it back up. They've got Andrews and Cheng in a T-stack. Andrews goes deep. But the throw will come to Petrov. Who fumbles it in the end zone. That is, does his best to keep that up. Unsuccessful. Ireland moving to set their stack in the end zone. See what they've got. Colin White with the disc. Looks like we'll have a foul call on that throw. And it looks like Kanziri won't have a problem with not contesting that one. As he bumped and grinded on the mark. Oh. They look for the same option again, but it's straight through the hands. Real pinger there, just flicked off his fingers. He's got a smile on his face. Sometimes you've just got to laugh. Australia set up in the same formation, but instead find Kanziri out of the front of the side stack. Boche looking for the up the line, bounces off the fingers, goes a second time. Can't pull it in. Right in front of it, injured teammate Josh Pereira, unfortunately doing his ACL at a recent preparation tournament. He's had to miss this whole tournament. I know it's been tough for him. And it was his birthday as well yesterday. It's Jeremy Ha goes aerial, very happy with himself. It looks like an uncontested foul, but he still pumped about it. Mark Doody under pressure there. Fouled. Game moves on. Jones goes for the flick. Lovely. But there's a call. I think it was. Looks like a pick. A pick. <laughs> <laughs> the Irish player there laying out to save the disc just as it was passed back after a pick. The Completely athleticism. unnecessary athleticism. <laughs> <laughs> Showing true dedication and commitment to keeping that disc alive even when totally unnecessary. A man that knows he's on camera, Stephen Jones. His well-wrapped bones around that disc moves it on. Roger slides it back to White. Stack still hanging out in the end zone, but the disc has moved downfield a bit. Rogers goes for the curly. Pulled down by Jack McNamara. Andrew's going sideways this time, can't get his hands on it. High release, popped over the top. Finds his teammate in the end zone, Jack McNamara. And Ireland end Australia's four point run. As they close the gap to just three. Seen, seen quite a bit of physicality out there. Um, sometimes off the off the disc, just when the disc has been brought into play, the stack's been set up. Seeing a couple of the um, opponents jostling, leaning into each other a bit. It's a little bit reminiscent of Australian rules football, and possibly also reminiscent of um, international rules where. The Irish Gaelic football is combined with Aussie rules football and they play with a round ball on a oval shaped field and go for it. Um, so maybe they're taking a little leaf out of the, in the other international game. You're absolutely right. I see both teams willing to play that physical brand of ultimate. And so far, all the calls being resolved very quickly, indicating that there isn't a whole lot of 
uh, animosity between the teams, simply both two teams willing to play physical and willing to put their bodies on the line. Yes, uh, Ruben Berg, the game advisor, was saying in another game both teams can set their expectations for physicality. It's a non-contact sport, but some level of contact is permissible as long as both teams are happy with the level. It can be figured out between the players. Island, vertical stack. Overshooting the up the line to Gary Gilmartin. Alex Scan picking it up and moving it immediately to Davis. The spirit captain who finds Grimmond, the captain of this outfit. These two providing this leadership for the team, both on and off the field. As Adrian Lim goes over the top to Evans, to Gann, who will find young Bill Foreman in the end zone, the youngest member of this team, for the goal, and that will secure half for the Australians. 8-4, that's a great half from them, they'll be very happy with that. Yeah, they look like they're having a lot of fun, the goies. I do think they're one of those teams that plays their best ultimate when they are having fun. Chatting to their coaches before the game, they said this outfit plays their best ultimate when they're playing with swagger. And I think you see that there with the way that they're getting around each other to celebrate that point. I suspect the Irish team is pretty similar. They just haven't quite hit their groove. But we'll see what they can um, chat about at halftime and... Maybe it'll liven their mood, get them back in the groove and mount their comeback. We do like a comeback, don't we, Max? Oh, we absolutely do. And we always believe it's possible. And we've seen that multiple times this week already. So don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break during this half time, but you shouldn't stick around for what is almost certain to be another great half of Ultimate when we return here at the World Under-24 Ultimate Championships.
welcome back. Just after half time in the men's power pool match between Australia and Ireland, and I'm joined here by Jackson from the Guanas. Yeah. How are you going? Pretty good. How's the energy feeling on this field? Uh, energy from both teams is pretty good. Yeah. Exciting. And should you guys go, go through to the quarterfinals after your power pools, who do you most want to be matched up again next? Uh, probably really like to play Japan again because they were like awesome fun to play against, and they pretty much play a completely different style to the rest of the world. So. That's pretty much who I want to play with. Excellent. Thanks very much, Jackson. And we let you get back up to the field to your spurgle. Yes, you. See you later. We'll be back on shortly. See you soon. And welcome back to the second half of the World Under-24 Ultimate Championships here in Perth, Western Australia. It's currently half-time between the Australian Goannas and the Irish men's team. The Australians going on a four-point run in the middle of the first half to secure themselves an 8-4 lead into half-time. It's been an upwind, downwind game, but the Australians have had the better of it, able to get those crucial upwind breaks when they've needed them. The Irish team having plenty of opportunities, but just a few too many unforced errors, a couple of cold drops have cost them. It doesn't feel like they're far off the pace though, and if they can clean up their play, this will be a real tight one and could go the whole distance. Yeah, the Irish team was straight into a chair at the start of half time. Managed to fit a couple in, so I think they've gone with the plan of rousing themselves pumping each other up and getting themselves ready for what could be a very interesting Come second half. Come to the mark. The Australians will be commencing this half on D as they pull downwind. It's probably a good chance to talk about the Australian coaching staff. They're led by Yuang, Alex Latimados, and Timothy's Copland. Both Yuang and Alex competing with the Australian Goannas in 2013 in Canada when they were able to secure themselves a bronze medal. I know that for a fact that that outcome is sitting in the back of their minds and motivating them to lead this team one step further this time round, as the Irish commence their offensive push. Curtis inside. It's DV, DV up the line to Jones. He usually finds Fogarty who pushes one a bit far. Jacob it's streaming Jacklidge. to the end zone. And it won't come, but he'll work hard and generate a big under, gaining lots of yards. Least with the disc, finds Mueller. Mueller using his length to his advantage to break that mark with an inside forehand to Jacobs. Jacobs running hard and generating a lot of meters for this Goannas team right now. Oh, and through the hands of Mueller, unfortunately. There won't be a call. Fortunately, the pressure getting to the Australians as much as it's getting to the Irish. Yeah, I think he felt the hands on the back there and stopped for a second just to consider whether that affected his uh, failure to comp complete the pass. Decided it didn't affect, didn't say a thing. So often, just being there infers pressure and it can be enough to cause those small mistakes as the Irish oh, reach deep. 
Very open, Ro Ronan Fogarty. Just managing to come down on the edge, edge of the end zone. Doody now. Lays it off. Still looking for it in the front of the end zone. <laughs> Finally popped in. Brian Connolly catches. The Irish would say that's good crack. They'll be happy with that. An interesting story I heard about Fogarty while having lunch with the Irish team today was that after finishing high school, he went into the seminary intending to become a priest, but uh, ended up dropping out and is now working as a pilot doing small tourist charter flights, which is incredible to hear. Still up near the skies, up in the skies near the heavens. Clearly got a, a strong passion for being aerial. You can see why, it does a great job of it there, pulling down that floaty huck in this difficult wind. They'll be feeling pepped up after that. Getting the first goal after half. They'll be loving it. The Irish now getting to play defense downwind. It's a great spot to be in for a D-line. The wind acting as an eighth player in many cases, forcing discs to pop up making them hang a little longer than they would otherwise, allowing your defenders to get involved in contests that they might not otherwise have a chance to be in. Oh, yeah! The pull fielded by Ha and sent it to Boche. The Goannas again operating out of this T-stack. It appears to be one of their preferred offensive looks. As they find McGuckin. He looks for his reset. And we'll have to find Gan in the centre, but it appears there was a call a little earlier. The disc. We'll stay where it is. In Ultimate Frisbee, picks, which is similar to screens or shepherds in other sports, are not allowed. Losing your player through the positioning of another player, be it your team or the others, is against the rules. <laughs> Chen. Has McGuckin going deep, but he doesn't want him. Instead opts for the safe option of finding Boche behind, and Boche will go deep. He's got Andrews underneath it. Andrews won't make a mistake as he sticks out his trusty right hand and drags that one into his chest. As Australia demonstrate they're equally capable of playing upwind offense. Not sure if Mark Early has had much to do with this particular team, but he's been an influential Irish ultimate player for many years. And he's definitely previously had a lot to do with the youth scene over there. Speaking of youth, this is a very young Irish side. Many of the lads here having played under 20s, both in 2016 and in 2014. And still, among this team, only three of them too old to play another under-24s campaign. So wow. expect big things from this Irish team in the future. So you can see big things from them now. Yeah, I did notice that there were two people named as chaperones on the team list, which suggests younger players on the team. Ireland at the back of their own zone. Oh, dig a desperate one out, and it's pulled down. Cook to Leask to Mueller. This Queensland trio working together very well. And the rest of the cutters will give him the space to do that. Oh, and the high release forehand to Trent Thompson in the front corner. Very cheeky, but very effective. 
Yeah, that's pretty tough for Ireland. They were stuffed at the back of their end zone and couldn't see, an, couldn't see an option. Had no chance for a dump because they were right at the back there. They might need another rousing cheer to pep them up. Chatting to this Irish team earlier, they mentioned their favourite song is the traditional Irish folk tune, the Rattlin' Bog. They use it to get themselves fired up and inspired to run hard and work hard for their country. Maybe time to bust that one out as this game is rapidly slipping away from them. I think we've seen that. Uh, I think we've seen Ferdia Rogers foot blocked yet, but rumour has it that he has been foot blocked in every single live stream game he's ever appeared in. I don't know how many that is. Could be one. Could be twelve. Still not a good record either way. He's doing so. He's doing well so far. Here he is, catching the frizz. Foot block free. Easily pushing through the match defence here. Rogers again. Finds Lynch, but there's a call. Pick call in the stack. Looks like Grimmond and McGuckin may have got tangled up. There'll be a brief discussion. And the disc will come back in. It's got Jones, White, Costello, Cronin all upfield. Oh, and a huge bid from Daniel Petrov. A cheeky little fist pump as well. He's happy with that. He knows how impressive that was. That was stifling offence. They had Ireland had no options and had to squeeze one up the line and Petrov pounced. Australia will have to work the full length of this field into the teeth of the wind. As Evans finds Grimmin. Guckin's going deep. The big fake came, he sold it to me. Petrov now has the disc, goes inside to Grimmin, showing his throwing finesse. Grimmin out in front for Lim, but it hangs just a bit too long, and the taller ledge, <laughs> after two or three swats at it, like the man by the campfire, swatting at the flies, eventually gets it. Then choosing his height advantage. And will immediately launch deep. Dan Petrov underneath, pumping the getaway six and he goes up. Oh. Jones got his hand on it, but could not pull it down. And the volume off the sideline has noticeably increased as both teams raise their intensity, generating a wall of sound of encouragement. Leo Micklem from Ireland really screaming his lungs out on the sideline. And Grimmin sees McGuckin going deep. That's a better deep shot. Costello drops onto the next player, but... Ash Evans will not be denied as McGuckin leads him into the end zone. And Australia... There's a call. Unclear whether that's a... It appears to be a travel call on the throw to McGuckin from Grimmond. <laughs> <laughs> They'll just 
discuss when exactly it occurred and if um, it occurred. So, uh, I have a question. Uh, he's calling a travel. Uh -huh. uh, the travel is a change of direction, uh, which I'm not agreeing with, agreeing with, yeah. like I'm in the moment. But he's saying that I've uh, stopped and sidestepped like that. Uh, I think uh, you're catching it going this way. At the last second, last okay. time. So I may, I may have in fact had my foot there and then I've just come forward and it looks like I've traveled. But what uh, I'm saying is that I think, I don't think that really, is, it's an open side throw, I mean. That's what I'm saying. Right, I'm just arguing the change of direction. That affects the play. Do you think so? Do you think the change of direction, if anything, I'm moving closer to you, you're putting more pressure on me with your mark. Right, but it's, it's still illegal. No, no, no. All right, so, uh, so, so he, he's, he's right. Uh, okay, fine. So 45 seconds, but quickly, he's right. Uh, you, you first rule is, did it affect the play before we start worrying about calling everything? Um, I didn't have a clear perspective, so I couldn't see his right. movement. You know exactly what his movement was. If you think that his movement meant that you couldn't get a block to it, then fair enough. Do you think you could get a block to it? Yes, because, I mean, I stopped because there was a travel. Okay, I understand that. But I'm blasting them. We can, we can contest it after this one bit. If, it's, if I'm throwing, like, a fat side, like, break huck, right. I understand where you stopped because you, you, right. you got broken. But if I'm throwing a four side Yeah, huck, sorry, Liam, that's 45 sorry. seconds. Right, so We're yeah, going to be contested. Yeah, yeah. You tried. <laughs> All right, let's bring it back, lads. Still a fucking wicked throw. Hey, buddy. Hey, Dude, I'm... Still, Mike. Still, still a ruddy good throw, <laughs> is what I heard. Okay, what stall were we on? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Coming in on one? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, give me a chance to get off the field. We heard there the characteristic Irish use of the English language. Uh, apologies for that to any listeners that may have disliked what they heard. But we did also get to hear a great and very respectful discussion between two players. In the end, the disc went back and the call was contested. Adrian Lim liked what happened last time, so he'll go to McGuckin again. But it's out of his reach. He did manage to get a fingernail to it. But it won't complete. Just for any of those viewers wondering what the temperature is in Perth right now, it's a fairly pleasant 21 degrees, and we have a wind speed of 27 kilometers per hour. Oh. Adrian Lim, a beautiful run through, just snagged it out of the air. Petrov now, two meters from the end zone. Oh, oh. great bid by Cronin. And Grimmin goes to Murph, he'll dish it to Lim. It isn't easier than that. And Australia extend their lead to six. It's 11-5 in this matchup between Ireland and Australia. Lim looking very pleased with his D. Not got much height in him, but matters not a spot. There have been a number of big aerial contests this game, and both teams have had a share of the spoils, but it feels like the Australians have probably been getting the best of it when it came, comes to the floaty jump balls. They do have a lot of tall timber on their team. Players like Sam McGuckin and Lockwood Murphy ruling the skies for the Australians. They'll play defense now, and Elliot Cook will launch the pull. Martin sticks one, it's a big inside out. Manages to stay on the field, but is pulled down by Elliot Cook. And Australia immediately says return to sender on that idea. And equally Australia is unable to unable to hold that one in. McNamara. Curtis. A 
again. I'm wondering if Dylan, Ryle, Dylan Ryan's dark spectacles might need to come off now that the sun is getting a little bit lower. It is a little bit off putting, but it's not as bright as it was in the middle of the day. As Elliot Cook launches deep. Ah. Incredible defensive effort. Kept his shades on. Still, still read the disc. That's a great job of getting in between the thrower and Sam Jacobs. As the Irish bring it back in, Shane McNamara is setting the stack. I know that he's glad to be able to play for this Irish team. He broke his ankle earlier in the year in probably slipping on some peanuts that had been earlier spilled on the floor. As unlikely as it sounds and as unfortunate as it was, he's made a full recovery and he's back. And I think the Irish want a new disc. If those peanuts had been beetroot coated like the Emma and Tom's ones, I don't suspect he would have slipped so hard. You're absolutely right. The Emma and Tom's nuts, incredibly good for you. Not only when you eat them, they're also less of a safety hazard on the floor. <laughs> hashtag look after yourself. We recommend you check that hashtag out, add it to your social media activities. Bill Martin sticks another one. Has it got enough air? Not quite. Joey Curtis trying his best to run that down. Least. As Harrison Revai. Rabs, as he's affectionately known among the team. Lasers a forehand, but it may be too low, and it is. Sheehan. Sheehan. Finds Gil Martin. Decides not to stick it this time. McAuliffe does. Much, well, much better weighted. And a double double misread, but Curtis lands first. Catches it on the way down. There's a discussion. But there is a foul there. I think the discussion may be whether it was in or out. Oh, I see. Perhaps. Yeah, they it's are the right the second back time there. that there's been a, a, a regather. Oh, and it's very close. From that angle, it's difficult to tell on the replay, but it is very close. Whether his tippy toes were touching the white line or if they snuck inside. Australia's happy. It appears the consensus is that it was a goal and the f his toe tips were just on the green grass. Delayed celebration from the Irish. It's hard to muster up quite as much enthusiasm after a call, but calls must be made whenever someone has an opinion. That's right, and that takes it to 6-11. Both teams able to get a couple of upwinders in this second half showing that maybe they've had a chance to adapt to conditions, get used to them, and now they're able to play through them as Australia calls a timeout. It's a great opportunity for us to thank the crew down at the Spud Shed Fresh Food Market. A big thank you to the Galati brothers for their incredibly generous donations of fresh fruit. They've been keeping us healthy uh, here up in the commentary booth. I know they've been keeping our production team healthy and all of the volunteers at the tournament. For another perspective on this game, we'll head down to Katie Locke on the sidelines. I'm actually going to give a big, huge shout out to Jacob from our volunteer force. He is currently sitting on the sideline, taking good care of the tournament social media. If you haven't already, make sure to go to the WU24 Facebook page and other social media so you can keep up to date with what's happening at the tournament. Back to you. Yeah, thanks, Katie. Share those links, get everyone on board. Still several days left of this great tournament to enjoy. 
talk about, laugh about, get serious about. In and particular, as things do heat up, the ramifications of every game do get more serious. As we said earlier, this game potentially the ticket for Australia directly into the quarterfinals. The Irish having won their pool in a high octane universe win over Great Britain and now finding themselves in this power pool mean that they're guaranteed a pre-quarter regardless of the result. So both teams, everything still to play for. It's all about positioning themselves in the draw in the best way possible for them to navigate away to the medal matches on Saturday afternoon. Ireland running down with the sun on their backs. Setting up their match defense. Australia searching for an option. They found one in Kanziri. As Gan moves it to Andrews, and he comes to the near sideline. Carr with the disc. Kanziri wide open. He's a Perth local. And I'm sure he's spurred on by the large gathering crowd on the hill, many of whom are also locals as he reaches deep. And he hits Rob Andrews in the end zone. That's a hometown show, po show pony throw if ever I saw one. Releases that outside in forehand, not a hint of float on it as it lays it into its target. Witnessed as many hammers as we did in the last showcased Goanna's game. Despite the wind being a little less ferocious. Not sure if that's a tactical change or a mood change or perhaps the style of Ireland's defence. But I would actually like to see a couple of hammers come out, especially from Rob Andrews. His hammer in that previous game that was on this stream was truly ferocious, the full length of the field. I could make a rec recommendation to you as a viewer, it is to go back and watch that game. It was incredibly exciting. The Australians not able to eke out the victory in the end, but one hell of a match to watch. All of the stream games are up on YouTube after the event if you want to go back and re-watch them. And we recommend that you do and share them among others if they would like to do the same. And there's plenty more high quality coverage to come. Hours and hours of fun. Ireland bring the disc back into play. Jack Lynch picking the frisbee up from the hill. Just shy of, actually I think it pummeled into some of those watching uh, players up on the hill who finish their day's play. Break, sails over the top, collected by Australia's Gan. Gan loving that arcing backhand over the defenders. He's thrown it a few times. A miscommunication between Petrov and Davis calls a turnover. Ireland really not finding their receivers here. Flurry of turnovers will lead to the Irish picking it up once again. Lynch, who studies and does the majority of his playing in Scotland and will be attending the World Ultimate and Club World Ultimate Club Championships later this year with Reading mixed, will bring it back into action. Joey Curtis working hard. Wasn't free enough for his thrower. DB with the huck. Sails over. He actually threw that huck a bit like a, a Japanese throw, but unlike the Japanese, his receiver wasn't expecting it to fade onto the break side. Evans moves it. We go to the far side with Murphy. Murphy 
Jax the backhand, not known for his hucking. He's usually the one on the other end of them. And unfortunately, Foreman and Lim both unable to pull that one down. Quite a high number of turnovers, but lots of oohs and ahs from the crowd. Seems to be enjoying it. More turns this point than a rickshaw ride round Delhi, I believe. As Gan throws the inside forehand to Murphy. Murphy on the doorstep. He breaks the mark, the high release backhand. And another turn. Curtis juking his player. Got open, he's now searching for another option, doesn't find one. Sticks a desperate flick. Foreman will gladly pluck that one out of the skies. And one bobbles out of the hands of Adrian Lim. We've seen a number of those cold drops this game, the wind certainly playing a factor. against a team as polished as the Australians. Curtis. Simple drops will be punished. And Lim doesn't make a mistake of it that time as he watches it all the way into his mitts, closes his hands on it. And that'll take it to 13-6 in favor of the Australians. I think even Ireland will be pleased at that, that point's over. They were... Uh not doing too well completing more than a couple of passes in a row. Sometimes it's better just to let a point finish and move on to the next. As so we get another look at that play, classic example of a fast break. Doesn't matter that Lim maybe gave up good six inches to his defender when the throw is perfect and out in front like that was from Evans. There's no debating who's going to catch it. Goanna's maybe looking to do what their senior role models, the Wombats, might do. Wombats being Wonderful Australian creatures who, when they find their prey in their burrow, back their firm rear into them and crush them in the dark hole. Ireland trying to get out of the hole before the descending rear. And Australia now with the disc. Elliot Cook moving it quickly to Harrison Revive. Mueller sizes up his options. Making Lee work for that, he does, and keeps it alive to Jacobs. Five metres out, small forehand to McGuckin, and that's all it'll take. It's Australia now in a match point position heading downwind with a commanding lead. This is not the game the Irish would have wanted. And at 14-6, feels almost out of their grasp. Having said that, it wouldn't be the first time something improbable and unlikely has occurred this weekend. We've seen a number of incredible comebacks. This whole tournament commenced with an incredible display from the Indians. After the Australian mixed team jumped out to a 7-1 lead, the Indians clawed back and took that game 12-11. Worth a watch back, even if you do know the result. Great game. Chock a block full of highlight plays. That's right, great display of the mixed version of Ultimate. Let's just pop down and see what Katie's thinking about. Oh, yeah! 
Speaking of mixed results and the India upset over Australia, we were looking like we had a strong Indian side, but they actually went down this afternoon to the Malaysian side, 15-11. Let you get back to the game. Interesting. Must be tight contest in those two mixed pools. Ireland back on offence, possibly for the last time. Let's hope not. DV reaches for that big swing. He'll be happy to pick that up. There's a call. Duty's just waiting for it to be resolved before bringing the disc in. Doesn't manage to complete, and they need to scramble here to get a block and save the game. Trent Thompson does a great job of getting that block, putting Australia in the perfect position to finish this one off. As Cook has Leask in front, but Leask not doing a lot, but he's done enough. And that's a goal, and that's the game, and that's all she wrote on this match. Australia close it out, 15-6. They'll be very happy with the result. An emphatic victory if ever I've seen one. Yeah, that's what you want to... That's the sort of game you want to have played on your way through power pools, feeling confident, looking forward to the next stage. Uh, that game and that result likely secures Australia spot in the quarterfinals, whereas it's equally likely now that the Irish will have to play a pre-quarter against one of the teams that have done well in the lower half of the bracket. Of course, both teams still fully capable of making it all the way to the medal matches. None of them are out for good yet, but slightly easier, easier path for the Australians to the pointy end of the competition. Ireland will have a fair bit to reflect on. They can use the video footage to maybe assess where they went wrong so that they can set themselves up well moving forward, give themselves the best chance to stay in this tournament, finish as high as they possibly can. As a bit of an armchair expert, as we in the commentary booth like to be, I feel like the one key adjustment the Irish will be looking to make for their next games is less unforced errors. Far too many simple drops, I think. Obviously, the wind playing a part, but you just can't give away the disc cheaply against quality opposition. That's right. Perhaps they need a warm-up that involves a hell of a lot of pinged discs, hard catches, get themselves in the groove before their next game. I'm sure they've caught a million difficult throws before. Just need to set themselves up to be in the right mind frame for the next challenge. And so on that note, we get here a few of the key moments in Australia's victory over Ireland as we wrap up day three of this tournament, the World Under 24 Ultimate Championships We've been coming to you live from Perth, Western Australia. Make sure you tune back in tomorrow morning. We've got a whole stack more games coming at you as we get a bunch more crossovers and into the quarterfinals for the men's division. I've been Max Stenstrom. I'm Claire Hassey. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Spread the word. Catch you soon.